Hello everyone and welcome back to Maytech. This video will be our second video on the Laser Pecker LP5 where we're going to be focusing on the slide extension and the rotary extension. If you haven't watched my first video on the Laser Pecker 5, you might want to do that first. The link will be in the description below. Also, if you want more information on the Laser Pecker 5, the link will also be in the description below. So let's start by looking at the slide extension first. What the slide extension does for the LP5 is increase the working width by two and a half times. So your working width goes from 120 millimeters all the way to 300 millimeters. This essentially turns the laser pecker into a larger machine, giving you a greater engraving area and more room to do batch processes. Now it's called the slide extension for obvious reasons as it works by sliding back and forth. And it works simply by placing it under your laser pecker and then plug it in one of your USB auxiliary cables. The first project we are going to do with this slide extension is to engrave the face of this piece of live edge fur I have. Setup is fairly simple. I'm going to start by placing my wood onto the slider and then try to center it and make it parallel with the slide as best as possible. Once that's done, we can jump into the software to do the rest of the setup. So here we are inside Laser Pecker Design Space, and here is the image that we are going to engrave. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to make sure both your Laser Pecker and your slide extension are powered up and connected to your computer. Once that's done, you want to go into mode settings and toggle the switch to turn on the slide extension. After you've toggled the switch, you'll now see that your canvas has increased to 300 millimeters in size. Let's now go have a quick look at the settings we're gonna engrave at. We'll be using a resolution of 1K. We'll be using the 450 nanometer as the laser source and we'll only be doing one pass at a power of 100 and a depth of 60. So after you have everything set up in the software the way you like it, it's time to preview your project. Previews with the slide extension are a bit different than the way previews are normally done. When you hit preview with the slide extension enabled, the laser pecker will just give you this line here. This line shows you the area of where the engraving is going to happen. Once you hit continue, you will see your slide move and you simply want to make sure that that line is centered on your workpiece. After you get your workpiece positioned with the line, you can then start the engraving process. So here we have the finished engraving. I did go ahead and give it a quick sanding with some 240 grit sandpaper. I then finished it off with a satin clear coat. I do like the way this plaque turned out. The laser pecker did an excellent job on it. And the results are very comparable to what I would have gotten from my much larger CO2 laser machine. So next up, I'm going to test this slide extension for doing some batch processing. What I'm going to do is take this piece of 1 8 Baltic birch plywood and cut a bunch of customized keychains from it. So here's my layout for the keychains. We'll be first engraving the keychain designs and then we will use the laser pecker to cut out each individual keychain. For the engraving settings, I'll have the resolution set to 2K. I'll have the laser source set to 450 nanometers. And I'll be doing one pass at a power of 100 and a depth of 20. Before I get engraving here, I'm just going to give this a quick preview just to make sure everything fits on my plywood. That looks good, so let's get making these keychains. Now here are the completed keychains. I did finish them off by giving them a light sanding. I then gave them a clear coat of painter's touch satin. 
And I do have these keychain rings for them, which you simply clip on just like so. I got these rings off of Amazon and they're relatively cheap if you buy them in bulk. So the laser pecker with the slot extension did a pretty good job on these. It didn't have any problems with the engraving or the cutting. And once again, the results are very similar to what I get with my other laser engraving machines. Let's now look at the rotary extension. This rotary extension does have a locking chuck, which you can open and close to adjust for the size of item you're engraving. It also comes with three different sets of adapters, which lets you fit all different types of items into the jaw, including these pin adapters, which lets you work on small items like rings. And you also get this flexible tape measure, so you can measure the diameter of the object you're working on, as that needs to be inputted into the software. The rotary extension also has this adjustable support, which is for use when you're working on heavy items. And it even has this little suction cup style mount for doing balls. So the support basically works by placing it under an item like so, and then adjusting it with the top knob here until it touches the bottom of the item you are supporting. This works great for keeping your item nice and horizontal in the chuck while it's being rotated. One of the neat features I found on this rotary extension that I haven't seen on many other extensions is this little suction cup style brace. This will allow you to engrave all types of different spheres like this ball. This extension is powered by simply plugging in one of the auxiliary USB cables from the back of the laser pecker. Another neat feature that this rotary extension has is the ability to adjust the chuck angle all the way up to 90 degrees. This allows you to use the rotary in either horizontal or vertical modes. The first item we are going to test this rotary extension on are these coated stainless steel rings. We are going to put an engraving all the way around these rings using the fiber laser. In order to fit the ring onto the chuck, I did install these little stud adapters. As you can see, there's a whole selection of different holes that you can thread the studs into. This allows you to use the chuck for anything from small rings to large bracelets. On my ring, I'm going to engrave this text here, which is the text from the one ring, which of course comes from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. After you connect the rotary extension, you do need to go into the mode settings and enable it by selecting the rotary extension switch. After you've enabled it, you'll see that your canvas changed to this long skinny rectangle. Now you simply just want to take your engraving and center it within the rectangle. The next thing you want to do is take either a diameter or perimeter measurement of the item you want to engrave and enter one or the other into the corresponding text box up here. It's fairly important that you're accurate with these measurements if you want the proper engraving. Let's now have a look at the settings I'll be engraving at. I'll be using a resolution of 4K. The laser source will be set to the 1064 nanometer option. I'll have the frequency set to 30, and I'll be doing one pass at a power of 100 and a depth of 35. Previewing with the rotary extension is very similar to how the preview works with the slide extension. You'll get this line showing where the laser is going to hit, and you simply want to make sure that line stays within the area you want to engrave as the rotary turns. After I completed my rings here, I gave them all a buffing with some fine steel wool. This was to remove any of the slag from the engraving process. If you're using a coated ring like I am here, you definitely want to make sure you're using a fine steel wool. And you'll want to make sure that you don't buff too much or you can remove the coating. I'm really pleased with the way these rings turned out. The laser pecker did an excellent job of capturing all the fine detail on the script. The last item we are going to engrave 
is this coated stainless steel water bottle. And as you can see, we're going to engrave this vertically. Now this is because this bottle is heavy and it's too wide for the support to fit under it horizontally. I also find the setting up of larger items like this bottle or tumblers to be much easier if you do it in the vertical position like we have here. One important note when you're setting up your design is that if you have the item you want to engrave set up vertically the same way I do, is that you want your image flipped upside down if you want it to engrave in the right orientation. You'll also want to make absolutely sure that you have your measurements for your perimeter or diameter entered correctly. For settings, to remove the coating off this water bottle, I'll be using a resolution of 2K. I'll be using the 450 nanometer as the laser source. We'll be doing one pass. It'll be at a power of 100 and a depth of 5. We'll just give this a quick preview to make sure the preview line fits within the area that we want to engrave. After the engraving process was done, I did give the bottle a quick wiping down with rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. This cleans up any soot left behind in the engraving process. And once again, I'm quite pleased at how this turned out. The LP5 did an excellent job of getting this design onto the bottle. The results look very crisp and professional. So both these extensions seem to be great add-ons for the Laser Pecker 5. They take a laser that you can already do a lot with and make it even more versatile. So that's it for this video. If you want to find out more about the Laser Pecker LP5 or its extensions, make sure to check out the link in the description below. If you have any questions about these extensions, you can leave them in a comment and I'll get to it as soon as possible. If this video was helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscription button and the notification bell if you haven't done so already. We'll see you all again next time.